Good morning, friends. They say what goes around comes around. <laughs> so I think I'm having that experience. When my wife and I answered the uh, invitation to go out to a health center in western Tennessee, that was 22 years ago. We got there, there was a big farmhouse. The farmhouse was empty, no furniture, we had no money. Went out and got some, a couple plastic chairs from Dollar General, took a few old uh, boards off a barn that was falling down, made a table, sat down and prayed and asked the Lord to help us. And my uh, closet, a little room up in the attic, my closet was my office. And today, I'm back in my office, in my closet. What goes around comes around, but it's kind of cozy in here. So if you notice there's a change from the kitchen into the closet, you have a, yeah, you have good powers of observation. It's a difficult subject today because, you know, it's in, when I was in the 11th grade, a lot of things were changing in my life. Uh, my sisters, when I was in the 10th grade, my older sister, Judith, was in the 12th grade. My younger sister, Peggy, was in the eighth grade. I was in the 10th. Judith was two years older. Peggy was two years younger. And both at the time were drug addicts. And, uh, and I was uh, right in the middle in the 10th grade getting involved in sports and noticed that if you wanted to be popular, it went hand in hand with drugs, alcohol, tobacco, and some things like that. And then somebody would say, look, you see what happened to your sisters. You see where they were going. And then you see that your father, when I was in the 11th grade, my father died of lung cancer. It was a long, drawn out, painful process. He was a chain smoker and he, was, uh, he died of lung cancer at home, hospice care. And it was, a, it was a horrible experience to see his body just wither away and his mind wither away too. So I saw the results in my, in my home. My, my sisters were on drugs, having terrible uh, challenges. My father was dying. And then I got a pack of cigarettes and tried to smoke it in the bathroom. And somebody will say, well, wait a minute. Can't you add two plus two? Can't you connect two plus two? Friends, I didn't learn how to think in high school. In school, they did not teach me how to think. They taught me that two plus two was four. I understood simple math, but I didn't understand the consequences of wrong choices. I learned nothing about really how to think in school. I learned how to think in the Bible. So I wanted to be popular. I wanted to be fashionable. I wanted to have friends. And the, the cost of that was the popular people, cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, and, you know, if you think about it, it's pervasive, it's socially acceptable. Even today, it's socially acceptable. I remember once I was in the Nashville airport, coming back from a trip, I, I came back to the Nashville airport, I was waiting to pick up my bags, and there was a man waiting beside me. A, a lady ran up, gave him a hug, I guess it was his girlfriend or his wife, and he said to her, I don't know what I'm going to do tonight, but whatever I'm going to do tonight, alcohol is going to be going to be in my picture and I thought you know that's it today drugs alcohol all of these things tobacco is very popular you know in fact you know we it, we've done seminars on, on on drugs and how to how to get the victory over them but it's everywhere you look you know the university is running on the coffee pot where would the government be if you took out all the coffee pots caffeine is a highly addictive drug you know, you have the, the commercial, the advertising, it, you, it's surrounded by invitations and temptations to partake, but it never tells you the result. You'll never hear Philip Morris say, you're going to make me rich, I'm going to make you dead. And that's the trade-off. That is intellectual uh, knowledge, but it doesn't give you power to stop. You know, even your body, the body seems to have a natural response when you're doing something to harm it or kill it. I tried cigarettes when I was, uh, I think, 14, 15 years old. I, I tried twice. The first time I locked up in the bathroom, got a cigarette out, stole it from my father, got a cigarette out, tried to light the thing, and started gagging and retching. It just got sick. My head started to swim. 
and didn't succeed. <laughs> and then a little while later, I got another cigarette, went back in the bathroom, tried the same thing, got the same result. And it just seems like the body has a, has a natural response to, uh, to these things that destroy our health, not only of our bodies, but of our minds. Now, I remember the first time I drank, and I'm not going to go into details, but you know, the, the, the smell and taste of beer, it was just offensive. And I remember almost gagging the first sip of beer. But I did better with that than I did with the cigarettes. I persisted. And uh, by the time I was in the 11th grade, I was drinking on a regular basis. And I remember uh, the persistence of the body to try to say, stop, you're killing me. Every morning there was a hangover. And that hangover could be translated into a plea from the body that says, please, no more, you're killing me. And, um, but I continued and persisted, and pretty soon my body craved it. And that's uh, the pit I was falling into in the 11th grade. I saw my sisters going in that direction. I wasn't into heavy drug use, but it was a whole lot of alcohol, marijuana, things like that. And uh, I was paying the price. But you know, I noticed later, much later, when I wanted to stop, I couldn't. I had no power. John 1.12, as many as receive, receive Him, He gave power. And that power is to say no, to be sons and daughters of God, to say no to things that are killing you. Proverbs 14.12, there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. Proverbs 16.25 says the same thing, but dear friends, I did not read the Bible back then. I was not a Christian. I was uh, self-directed, self-governed. I was on the road to self-destruction. And my teachers had nothing to say on these subjects. We learned 2 plus 2 and A squared plus B squared equals C squared, but nothing about the dynamics of social interaction and drug use and the dangers therein. And I just couldn't stop. I remember, you know, going to... Uh, I learned a lot from my mistakes. I joined the staff of a mission hospital. This was about 28 years ago. I had stopped drinking at that time. I'd gotten a victory, and, but that's for later on. You know, I, I joined the staff at this hospital. I was working in the administration, and I got my first opportunity to work with, you know, with lifestyle guests, with people. What I, was, what I was asked to do was to do the stop smoking seminars, and I'd never smoked. And I remember, you know, trying to put together the seminar, I dwelt a lot upon... Uh, the expense, you know, what it costs to smoke, you know, to buy two packs of cigarettes a day times, you know, this much money times uh, 12 months times, you know, you, you, you're spending yourself broke buying cigarettes. And then I would show pictures of cancerous lungs, you know, trying to show people the dangers involved. And, you know, the risk involved, the, the dangers of, of developing cancer, uh, emphysema, all these, these, these the, the package deal with, with tobacco. You know, it's just, it's not enough to convince people. An intellectual appeal will never convince people. On the side of the cigarette pack, it says this cigarette, in essence, it says this cigarette is going to kill you. People smoke it anyway. Information is not enough. Alcohol, drugs, caffeine, it's not enough. You have to give, you have to point people. John 1, 29, behold the Lamb of God. That is power to turn away from these things that just grip us in the clutches and we can't escape. So I learned, and those were failed seminars in a sense, talking a lot about, you know, the, uh, the, the, the way nicotine acts in the body and all of these things and the, and, the, and, the, and the carbon monoxide blocking the hemoglobin and the oxygen transport system in the red blood cell, saying all these things, full of information, full of facts, full of pictures to scare you, full of uh, money-saving ideas. My, my dear friends, where is the power? We need motivation, not information. Information is good, but without motivation, you don't have much. And then we need some, we need some, uh, we need some principles. But you got to have power to put the principles into, into practice. And I just didn't give that in those seminars. I really didn't understand the nature of the beast. Because unless you've been addicted to something, you don't understand the stronghold it has on you. And I should have known better because I was addicted to a lot of things. You know, I was, and I'll end on this. You know, I was, uh, 
uh, in uh, the Kincott Church in Kingston, Jamaica, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine years ago. And I was in the church and I preached a sermon that morning, did question and answers, Q&A in the afternoon. And it was a rather large church, full of people. One of the questions, young man raised his hand, stood up, and asked me. He said, what is your opinion on medical marijuana? And I can remember, you know, a lot of the people in the church, a lot of smiles, a lot of frowns. You could tell there was a mixed response. No matter what you said, you're going to displease part of the congregation. And uh, I think I just kind of dodged the question, didn't really give a direct answer. My purpose was not to stir controversy. It was to draw folks to Christ with the gospel, the gospel of health in that case. But, you know, as I thought about that question, if I were asked that question again, I would say, you know, medical marijuana, I'd have to run it through uh, my checklist. Is it going to make me more aware is it going to give me better discernment? Is it going to give me a sharper mind? Is it going to help me to make decisions that will be a benefit and blessing to me and those around me? And if it passes that test, well, you might convince me that medical marijuana, but you know, I used to grow marijuana. I used to smoke marijuana. I knew what it was. And I know Anything that robs us of our discernment, our ability to see, to discern, to make clear decisions, that's not a place I want to go. My dear friends, Joshua 24, 15, choose ye this day. I want to be able to make clear choices for my family, for my health, for my work. Everything I do, I want a mind that thinks clearly. I do not want to blur reality, and to me, that is the main objection to alcohol, drugs, I include caffeine, tobacco. It blurs our ability to perceive reality. And without that, where does that leave us? It leaves us making a shipwreck of faith and drifting on the sea of confusion. May God help us. <laughs> May God help you. May God help me today to uh, be free. Men in Christ Jesus, that's my prayer. To walk free, to choose free, to be free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. My dear friends, God bless you richly today and uh, give you power to make choices and to make the right decisions. Have a blessed day.